Hi there, we're going to go over a quick tutorial on how to use your iOS thermal camera that connects to iPods, iPads, iPhone devices. So initially what we're going to do is use FLIR 1, which is the actual camera app. So I'm going to tap on that, and then it's going to say plug in your camera. Rather than have it face up, which is probably your first inclination, you actually want to have this facing down because you want to look at the screen and have the camera face away from you. We're going to turn the device on. And we'll show you which uh, apps you're going to use. FLIR 1, this one right here, is what actually takes pictures. FLIR Tools is what you use to build a report. And so let's start off with FLIR 1. And it's going to say, plug in your FLIR 1 to see the heat. So what we're going to do is take our device, stick it into the bottom of the lightning jack here, and then we have to turn it on. And there's a button on the side. I'm going to show you that here. And depress that for a few seconds. And then a couple seconds later, we're going to see that this camera will come alive with thermal image. OK, so here we go. You have thermal imaging turned on. So right now, I'm looking at a sound card audio device with a couple cables plugged into it. And then I have my iMac in front of it. And you can see my reflection to some degree. OK, so what let's do is imagine this is a PM. What we're going to do is we're going to take a photo of the equipment that we're going to attach later to the actual PM and Maximo. And so, first of all, I'm going to take a photo for perspective. Note here, you want to make sure that the reticle itself is smaller than the object that you're trying to measure of temperature. So, for example, if I'm trying to measure temperature of this screen in this general location, sure, it's going to work great. But if I'm trying to actually measure temperature of these little dots below, the reticle is actually bigger than those, and that won't be accurate unless I get closer. First of all, let's look at this. We could see that we're near 100 degrees, but maybe the area of concern is the knobs themselves. So I'm going to do is take a picture by pushing the shutter circular button on the bottom here. Now I'm going to do is get closer. Of course, there's no safety concerns here, but you have to consider that when you're doing your PMs. So I'm looking here now at the dead center of this, and it looks like I'm getting a little hotter, I'm getting closer to 115 degrees. So I'm going to hold steady and OK. So I got another photo. So at that point, I'm going to ask myself is, OK, I've got my thermal images. They look, too, they look pretty good. The question is, is what about the actual equipment? Is this room dark right now? Because the thermal image doesn't care, but your reference photo might. And so I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to turn the light off in this room here. Notice I turned the light off. Nothing happened to the actual piece of equipment. But now I'm going to take another photo. I'm going to turn the flashlight on, and now that I've done that, I'm going to take another photo. Okay, now that we've taken our photos, what we want to do is review these and then put them into our photo library of our actual camera. So on the bottom left corner here, if I tap on that, I'm going to take this most recent photo and save image. I'm going to take this one here and save image. This close-up one we took, save image. The original one, save image. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go leave the app and click on FLIR Tools. Now I'm going to click on the Click Import button on the top left. Now I'm going to go to my Photo Library. And then I'm going to pick on Camera Roll. Look at the most recent images here. OK, so now let's select some photos. If I remember correctly, I think it's this one, this one, that one, that one, that one and that one. I'm going to click on Done. OK, so now under Import 3, I've got six images in there. And I'm going to select all of these to be part of my report. So I'm going to click on the Report bottom here and say Create Report. Using the Speech to Text feature on the iOS device, I'm going to save my fingers from having to type all this. And I'm just going to say Thermal Image Reference Work Order 1234. And then under notes, I'm going to put some notes in here, such as this is a report to illustrate how to use thermal camera on iOS device. Notice that there is the thermal images and also the original image itself. Click Create on the top right corner here. So here we are on page one. Notice there is plenty of parameter details, as well as both the thermal image and the actual image. Moving to page two, notice what happens to the regular photo. The reason why it's dark is because we had the lights off.
Now on page three, notice that the flash illuminated this sound card here so that it at least is visible as opposed to the one that was dark. If I go back, you can see it's dark, and then back here we have it being visible again. Notice that each page of the report has a notes box where you can put in some detailed information for that specific photo. All right. Okay, so now we have our actual PDF with all of our information inside of it. Now from here, if you wanted to, you can email it, or you can even print it if you had a wireless printer. But emailing is kind of cumbersome, so we actually have a better solution. It involves Box. On the very bottom, there's a share upward arrow icon. Tap on that, and you're going to tap on Open In. And so if you say Open In, use the Box application. So tap on Box, and here I'm going to put it in a folder. So I'm going to go All Files, Miscellaneous, here's one, Thermal Sample Report. And in here, I'm going to store this PDF in here. I've already done it a few times, but I'm going to do it one more time here. I'm going to do is say choose. And then right before I push the upload button, I'll tap on rename it. And let's call this, after the work order, C1234. And let's call this reference uh, thermal images of sound card. Say done. And then upload. And notice how it says upload in one file. And when it says work completed, you should now have an actual PDF in this folder with that name. And then from there, what we can do is we can link it to Maximo directly. So let's see how that works. We're going to do is tap on the three right dots here. And then we're going to do is say share. And when you share a link in box, the only thing you have to do is first enable the link, is before you copy the link, this link by default is very secure so that we don't um, reveal any kind of health uh, protective information, etc. But this isn't proprietary. This is just basically a report to show everything's all, all good. So we're going to do is we're going to change accessible to people in this folder to people with the link. This allows anyone on any device to open it up as long as they have this link. And might as well allow them to download it. And then we're going to say share link. And then we're going to copy that link. Okay, now that the link is copied to the clipboard, all we have to do is paste that as an attachment in Maximo. I know, it sounds like a lot. But it's actually not too tough. Here's how you do it. Okay, so here we are in Maximo. And granted, we're on the phone, so it looks pretty, pretty squashed. But if you were in the desktop, you would just click on the little paper clip here and add new attachment and then click on Add New Web Page. And then you're going to click Specify URL. Double tap, paste, and we'll just call this a test PDF of thermal images. It's called a test report. And then we're going to click on OK. And then in the future, if someone taps on the view attachments, they'll see test report PDF of thermal images. They'll tap on that, and here we are, right into the actual report here that we created. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.